Yo, peace was good. Um, welcome to another song my CD collection. This is 102, part 102. But before I start, I want to give a, um, a big condolences to the late, great Combat Jack. Uh, he lost his battle with cancer. Um, he died of colon cancer um, yesterday morning. Um, I've heard the news on Facebook um, by a uh, Digger, the same producer that um, worked with Cameron and Children of the Corn, you know, Young Guns and stuff like that. So um, that's where I heard it from. And then everybody else, like later on, like during the day, was posting recipes to Combat Jack. So it's unfortunate. Um, Duffy will be missed. Love this show. Duffy gave podcasts um, a new name. You know, it's on a hip hop level, brought it to a whole different level. And he had a whole bunch of podcasts birthed after Combat Jack and stuff like that, so, um, and also, I want to give a big shout out to, to the usual suspects, Mike Sears, um, Ross Hartley, Freddie Lugo, Killer Tapes 93, and John Dixon, and then everybody else, shout out to you guys, man, alright, I'm going to go through some of the CDs, let's get started, alright, first CD I want to show you guys is, a. Uh, Crime scene, uh, crime scene is um is like a whole bunch of groups together. Is two duos, one trio, and one uh, one um MC by himself, and um it's eight people. They're from which make up crime scene, and they're from um I want they're from Long Island. I want to say they're from Midtyville, but what's special about this album is that. Um, it's pretty much all the songs that they recorded from the mid '90s all the way up to the early, early late '90s, I'd say. But more of, more of their mid '90s stuff. Um, you know, songs like by Drama Club, uh, The Heist, um, Strictly, Strictly Keep Creeping, ended by NSV, uh, well, for Suspicious by Big Cell, Times Is Tragic. Um, so all my underground heads that um, collect 90s 12 inches, you guys should know those songs that I just mentioned because those were those songs were pretty big in the underground circuit. Um, what's cool about this is that um, they um, one of the people they um, autographed it for me to Steven. Welcome to the crime scene. Pretty dope. That's one thing. When you buy CDs, you know you get stuff like this. Straight from the artist. You're not going to get that when you download and shit like that. Don't get me wrong. I do downloads. But, you know, I like to buy the CDs too. You know what I'm saying? Depending on the artist. Um, pretty, pretty good. Really enjoy this right here. Um, like I said, if you like mid-90s New York hip-hop, then you'll definitely enjoy it. Pretty dope. Like, I'll show you the um, the artist. Uh, let's open it up a little bit. So you guys can see this. Uh, then you got a uh, big cell, drama club, uh, NSV, and O O Uto or O O Two T O. There's not many groups, so dope Long Island hip hop, man. So very very dope. Um, I post in the description box where you can buy the CD directly and stuff like that, so you can show support. All right, so that's a uh, crime scene with their uh, debut album. Very dope, released in 2017. All right, next album. Um, these next three albums, I'm gonna give a shout out to Freddy Lugo. He hooked me up as usual. Shout out to you, my guy. Um, hope all is well with you. All right, next album is uh, Prince Marky D of uh, the Fat Boys fame. Uh, this is his second solo album, released in 1995. This is the last time he ever put out. Um, you guys should know who Prince Marky D is, or for those who don't know, He's an MC from East New York, you know, him being one of the, um, one third of the Fat Boys, and um, you know, you know, he, you know, he did his thing with the Fat Boys at one point, but then throughout the early '90s um, is where he started making a big name for himself. Um, he started getting more into production, and you guys might not be familiar um, with his name as a producer. But when you hear his music, you will be, you know, like, um, he had a, sorry about that, he had a big, um, 
help with the, you know, Mary J. Blige, um, her first time with um, Real Love, you know, songs like that. Like, pretty much that whole album, What's the 411, is his sound on that album. So, um, you know, he's worked with, like I said, Mary J. Blige, Mariah Carey. Um, I think he's worked with Jodeci, um, Jennifer Lopez, you know, Craig Mack, and, you know, people like that he's worked with. So, um, anything, anything in the R&B that had to do with the R&B from the early to mid 90s and stuff like that, he definitely had something to do with it. So, yeah, man. Um, this is, like I said, it's the second album. The big single of the album is called Crunch Time, featuring Hassan, the love child. Uh, there was a video for it. And um, what I noticed with this album is, is when he raps, he's definitely reminiscent of uh, Heavy D. He definitely has a big Heavy D influence, rapping-wise, even cadence-wise, and even the production and stuff that he raps over. And it's crazy because... Um, I think like last month I seen a video, I mean not a video, but a picture of, of both him and um, Heavy D together. So I mean, so that's, that shows you that they were good friends and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, now what he does for a living, um, he's actually a, a radio personality down here in Florida, uh, specifically in Miami. Um, he worked, he's a radio personality for um, 99 Jams, which is pretty much, pretty much like the Hot 97 of South Florida. So uh, so he's been doing that um, for a while now. So um, before that, he was working at um, 103.5 The Beat, which is kind of like the 105.1 of Florida over here. But then now he worked with 99 Jams, like I said, it's like the Hot 97 of South Florida. So, But yeah, Prince Marky D, Love Daddy, released in 1995. If you guys like Heavy D, like that kind of music, then you'll definitely enjoy this album right here. So, like I said, once again, shout out to my guy, Freddy Lugo, for looking on, for putting, for looking out. Alright, next album from the Freddy Lugo again is uh, Executioners with their, I believe this is their third album. Yeah, this is their third album, released in 2004. You guys should know who Executioners are. Uh, big DJ group, which consists of Mr. Sinister, uh, Total Clips. Uh, the late great um, DJ Rock uh, Rock Raider, rest in peace to him. Um, like I said, Rob Swift. Um, there was two others that I've mentioned before that, um, but I can't remember the names at the at the moment. But those four, you guys you guys should know. So pretty much leaving off from built from scratch. Um, I thought it was okay, you know. Um, when it comes to the executioners, when it comes to like putting out an album, they're very hit and miss, to be honest with you. Um, I know one of the big songs of the album are uh, Live from the PJs, which features Ghostface, Trife, and Black Dot. Um, like This was a single, and I think Back to Back was a single as well, with uh, Saigon and Scram Jones. Um, this album was okay. I've only like like three songs of the album. Truth be told, that's the only thing. The rest, I feel like you know, too many rock influence kind of beats, so it didn't really rock with me. And I like rock music, but I don't, I don't know. It just didn't. Like when they did, um, it's going down with Linkin Park. You know, it worked for them. Like it sounded dope. But I guess they tried to do that again on this album, and it really didn't work. It just it was a little bit too experimental for my taste. So. Just wasn't a big fan of this album, but um, yeah, but this is Executions with Revolutions, released in 2004. Um, like I said, much appreciated Freddy Lugo for this. And last one, the Freddy Lugo Files, is uh, Young Buck's uh, second studio album, um, titled Buck the World, which is pretty much a play on of uh, Fuck the World. Um, yeah, uh, the second, this is the second and last album. That he did with uh, G Unit before he left G Unit, oh, he got kicked out. To say, um, there are a couple singles off the album. The singles are "Bust Your Head." Uh, what's the other song? "You Ain't Going Nowhere." And now I know you want me. Those are the singles off the album. Um, one of my favorite songs off this album is uh, "Hold On" feature Fifty Cent, which there is a video for. Very, very, very dope. I really enjoyed that song a lot. Um, yeah, man. Actually, pretty good, man. I actually enjoyed this album. 
I did you know, think about, you know, Young Buck, you know, I'm like, hey, Young Buck, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I'll give him a chance. And album was really, really good. Actually, like, his first time he did, uh, Straight Outta Cashville, well, his first time with G-Unit because um, he put out diff- uh, independent albums back in the early 2000s, um, but, you know, I could imagine those being hard to come by. But, um, like I said, this is the second final album that he did with G-Unit. Um, really good, like the beats on this album, really dope. I think I like probably like eight songs of this album. This album got like 17 tracks. So I probably like like seven or eight album- songs of the album. So this is not too bad, you know, but uh, very, very dope. Excuse me. Definitely want to get my hands on this um, straight out of Cashville. To me, a lot better than this album. But that's not to take anything away from this album. It's really good. But yeah, this is Buck the World by Young Buck. Released in 2000... 2007? Yeah, 2007. Thank you uh, to Freddie Lugo for those CDs. Much appreciated. Alright. Next album. I've mentioned, I've showed you guys this guy before. Uh, he came out with an album called Magna Carta back in 2012. No, not Jay Z. Um, none other than M9, aka Melanie 9 from the UK, uh, with his second album, um, Old Pictures, released and released this year. Very dope album. If you guys are familiar with Melanie 9, you guys should know what you're gonna get yourself into with this, with this guy right here. Um, love this guy right here. Cool. Me and him chop it up from time to time on Facebook. You know what I mean? I've always felt like he was like the resurrection of Nas. From the It Was Written era. Mixed with a little bit of Tragic Gaddafi. But not as aggressive, if that makes sense. But, I mean, this dude is a poet. Like, the way he raps, like, is so what Nas would have done in the 90s, man. I mean, I can't stress that enough. You guys, like, if you missed the old Nas, this is the guy to check out. And, um... Something a little bit different. This album is tend to be a little bit more laid back, um, but not in a bad, in a, but in a good way. You know, um, there's no like they don't don't think like you know some pop songs or anything like that. Um, it's still boom bap, but it's like more in a lo-fi scheme of thing. Um, scheme of things. Um, think you know I know there's a big lo-fi. There's like a lo-fi movement going on, so kind of like that. Um, kind of reminiscent of like Jay Dilla back in the back in the mid to late nineties. You know, the shit that he would do like Slum Village. Like that kind of style of hip beats will be on this album right here. Um Love this song, right? Love this album. Really dope. One of my favorite songs is a Heart Shaped Box. Um That's one of the songs off the album. Polaroid, that's a single off the album. There was a video for that. Pretty dope song right there. Um, like I said, Heart Shape Box, definitely check that out. To kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about with um, Heart Shape Box and stuff like that. Really dope, very, very dope. Deep Brother, definitely support dope hip hop. Um, he has actually, um, let me see, I think he's kind of, I think he autographed, yeah, he signed it, I think. Uh, did he? I don't think we did. I don't remember. But either way, though, man, I I definitely appreciate the support. I definitely, you know, appreciate you know him, you know, as an MC, as a person, cool dude, man. Overall, very dope MC. Old pictures by M9, released in 2017. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next album. It's an album that I've been trying to get my hands on for a while, but I'm kind of disappointed with it, and I'll tell you why in a minute. It is Lost Professor with the LP album, released in 2009. I know you guys are probably thinking, what the hell is this blue outline? Well, the story is, is with this. This is, I actually bought this from Amazon, and they had co- their own copies. But, this is like their own version of the album. And like, when you buy their albums from them, like when you buy it new, this is what you're going to get. Is you're going to get like their own carbon copy of the original album. Um... Which kind of pisses me off because it looks so fucking plain. Like, look at this shit. This looks so plain, dude. Like, this is... Look at this shit. It's fucking plain. Look at this shit. Bullshit, man. What the fuck is this? Like, what the hell is that, man? That's, 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 that's the thing that disappointed me with that. But I'm just glad to own the album. 
Um, the story with this album, I'm pretty sure you guys know about this album, but um, this album originally was supposed to come out back in 2000. No, I'm sorry, 1996. But the record label that he was under at the time, um, Geffen Records, home of Jizza when he did um the Liquid Swords album, wanted him to do a more radio friendly type of album. You know, more songs like you know, wanted him to follow the Biggie route. He's like, nah, fuck that, you know, this is me, this is who I am. And, you know, I guess what people would call backpackers, they didn't want him to make a, another backpacker album. Like, okay, what you did with, you know, Main Source, okay, that was cool for 1991, 1992, but you need to change the times, that kind of thing. And he was kind of like, no, fuck you, I'm not doing that. So, and, you know, Lost Professor, he's always been vocal about that. And they ended up shoving the album, and he ended up getting kicked off the label. And in 2002, he had dropped um, the Lord, um, first class album that came out in 2002, which I showed you guys, which was okay. It could have been a little bit better. But that same year, he actually gained the rights to this album, and he actually put out the promo version of that album. And um, that's actually a collector's item. And then it, fast forward to 2009, was the official release of this album right here. Um, the album comes with 18 tracks, things like that. The singles off the album, there's two singles. The singles are I Just Want to Chill, which they have a video for, and Mad Scientist, which, are, which is like his biggest single off the album. They both have videos. Very dope. Really enjoyed this album. Um, I eventually would like to get my hands on the original 2009 album of this album, but um, that goes for a lot of money. That's why I bought it off Amazon, because I'm thinking, oh, okay, got it for a decent price, but um, yeah, but just, just the overall... You know, you, you get what you pay for is what they're saying. So I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. And if I see it for, you know, I guess somewhat decent price, then I'll just have to bite the bullet and get it. I know they have a Japanese version. And I'm probably going to have to get that one because that's the one with the more, you know, reasonable price. But, you know, one day though. But, yeah, LP with Lost Professor. The LP released in 1996. Next four albums, I want to give a shout out to my guy, um, Killer Tapes 93, for blessing me with these four CDs. All right, shout out to you, my guy. It is Too, uh, too Short with um, Born to Mac, released in 1987, the year I was born. <laughs> um, this is actually the 1989 reissue. Um, very dope album, you know, very, very dope. You know, because growing up, I, was, I didn't really follow Too Short like that. But then in recent years, I started getting into Too Short, just trying to check out his early albums, and I really enjoyed what um, he was spitting and stuff like that. I like the, the music and stuff like that. Uh, he does the production on this album. Yeah, very dope album, very iconic, very dope. I mean, Born to Mac, man. I mean, that pimp shit, you know, what better guy than Too Short, you know what I'm saying? Pretty dope. Um, the difference with this album is that... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. With the OG copy is the song track two, Mac Attack, was not on the original. It didn't, it got put on to the reissue. That's the only difference with this album and with the 1989 version and uh, the 1987 OG copy. But yeah, glad to own it. Thank you, um, for, um, Killer Tapes. One thing I like about this is um, where it says, Warning, Ghetto Music can be hazardous if not played loud pretty dope I, I fucking love that man next album still in the two short realm of things is uh short dogs in the house released in 1990 by two short fucking love this album this is the dirty version this is not the clean version because when I bought when I bought this album a while back, I bought the edited version, not knowing that. You know what I'm saying? Because certain albums that were dirty didn't have the parental advisory content on um, la um, labels. So just thought I just throw that out there. There are two singles off the album, uh, "The Ghetto" and "Short but Funky." Those are the two singles off the album. Um, fucking love this album. Definitely one of his best albums in his catalog. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, glad to own this joint. Um, ain't nothing but a word to me with Ice Cube Fucking dope um, Yeah man this whole album is freaking dope man But yeah uh, Short Dog 
Short Dogs in the House by Too Short, released in 1990. Very dope. Next album is uh, Encore with Layover, released in 2004. I showed you guys uh, Encore before. Uh, he did, um, I showed you his first album, uh, Self Preservation, that came out back in um, 2000. Um, this is second and only album that he dropped. Um, second and last album that he ever dropped. Um, this is when he was with, um, he was signed under the Hieroglyphics record label, um, Hiro and Imperium. Um, Encore, he's from um, the Silicon Valley of Mel Peters, you know, the Bay Area and stuff like that. Very dope, very dope MC, very underrated. Um, the only single of this album that I could think of is Real Talk featuring Ladybug Mecca, Ladybug Mecca of um, di Digital um, Diggable Planets fame. There is a video for that. Um, production is done by Jake One, um, Vitamin D. Um, yeah, man, really dope album, really, really dope. Um, not as good as if, as his first album, but this is actually a pretty good album too, man. But um, yeah, man, Encore with Layover, released in 2004. This is his last thing he ever dropped. Next album and last album by my guy, Plan uh, Killer Tapes 93, is Planet Asia with Dirty Digs. Um, this was released in um, 2015. Very, very dope album. Uh, Planet Asia, I've mentioned him before. He's been in the game since the mid 90s. Uh, he's been putting out mad work, putting out so much albums. Um, he's known for his affiliation. He um, He's part of a different types of groups, uh, Ca a bunch of groups like Cali Agents, um, which was him and Rasco, um, Durag Dynasty. Who else? Um, who's in the, group? the Gold Chain Military group. And he's done a whole bunch of. Um, sorry about that. He's done a whole bunch of um, collab albums with like you know people like uh, DJ Muggs, uh, Gentle Dean, Dirty Diggs, one of the producers of the, the producer of the album. I mean, what I like about him is that he's been he's very consistent. And he puts out quality product. I know I'm gonna get a, probably a lot of shit for this, but to me, he's the West Coast version of Sean Price, just because of his aggressive style, his choice of beats, his delivery, his consistency in music and dropping albums like that. And I mean, he's gotten better over the years. I mean, this is that's he, one of the few artists from the '90s that came out that gotten better with age and. Plan Asia can go no wrong, man. Very dope, very dope album. Highly recommend it. I'm gonna put a stop to it because um, I think this camera can only record um, nine minutes. I mean, 29 minutes. So I'm gonna record a part two, or I'm gonna do a one, a part 103. So stay tuned for more. I hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. Peace.